Lessons That Count, a math series presented by the Fort Collins High School Math Honor Society. Today we will be talking about indirect measurement. Indirect measurement allows you to find distances that are difficult to measure directly by hand. Thales was a Greek mathematician and one of the first recorded people in history to use indirect measurements. He wanted to know the height of the pyramids, so he used shadow measurements and proportions to approximate the height. Besides the shadow method, you can also calculate indirect measurements using special right triangles, similar figures, or measuring devices called clinometers. I'm going to go find Dirk Carroll and Armand. Bye! Bye! Hey guys! Hey, what are you doing? What's up, Ramon? Oh, I'm just doing some word problems. It says right here that Ramon is using a mirror to measure the height of a geyser. There's no way that would work in real life. Right? This has got to be fake. But then, why would it be in the book? Yeah, let's go ask Miss Seigel if this mirror thing really works. Okay. Hey, Miss Seigel. We have a question. Can you really figure out the height of something by using mirrors? That's just unbelievable. There's no way that could work. Well, actually, you can. By taking measurements of distances and heights, you can use similar triangles to calculate the heights of things that are difficult to measure directly. Let's try it ourselves. Can you think of something around the school that would be really hard to measure? The tower! I'm Marion Pike. I've been asked to tell you a little bit about my memories of the tower at Old Fort Collins High School. The tower is an unusual place to want to go. It's wonderful because at that time it was one of the tallest things in Fort Collins. It's fun. There are so many traditions at Old Fort Collins High that you just can't ever forget them and you, they've made your life better. So the mirror needs to be placed so that when you're standing straight up, you can see the reflection of the top of the tower in the mirror. I'll be the person in the measurements. I'll help with the measurements. We need the measurements from the base of the tower to the mirror, from Dirk to the mirror, and the height of Dirk. All right, let's start measuring. He's six feet tall. It's 153.5 feet. So let's draw a picture of what's happening. All right, so we know the distance from the mirror to the FCHS tower was 153.5 feet. And then we know that the distance from the mirror to Dirk was 10 feet. And Dirk is six feet tall. Uh, so now what? This is just a case of similar triangles. The ratio of the tower's height to the distance to the mirror is going to be proportional for Dirk's height to the distance to the mirror. Awesome! Now we can solve our proportion by cross multiplying and solving for x, which happens to be the height of the tower. So we can do 6 over 10 is proportional to x over 153.5. And when we cross multiply this, it is 921 is proportional to 10x. So when we divide both sides by 10, x is equal to 92.1 feet. That means that the tower is approximately 92 feet tall. Now that we've solved a problem with indirect measurements and similar triangles, can you? How's it going? My name is Tim. I'm with Davy Tree in Fort Collins, Colorado. The main reason uh, tree height is important in, in our industry is because often we're felling trees in tight spaces, residential backyards where there's objects to hit. One of the tools that we use is the clinometer and uh, this has a laser in it. It's a, an indirect measurement tool. This is a, a great way for estimating tree height. Um, you just uh, take it like this, uh, shoot the laser out, that will give you the distance between you and the tree and then you'll take a, a, another shot. As you go up the tree, you'll hit the laser again. That gives you the distance between you and the top of the tree, and then it also calculates that uh, angle and that triangle that you're trying to form. 
thing I like about my job is that um, every day is different. Uh, there's always a problem to be solved, whether it's seeing where a tree is going to land when you're felling the tree, to seeing where a crane needs to be situated when we're removing the tree and measuring that distance. So all in all, it's uh, never a dull moment. Uh, there's always something to do, some problem that needs to be solved. We've gathered some data by measuring the shadows of both the tree and Katie. The tree shadow is 16.5 feet. My shadow is 3 feet. I am 5 foot 9, which is 5.75 feet. If the tree is 34 feet away from the house, will the tree hit the house if it is cut down in one section? Now is your turn to use similar triangles to calculate the height of the tree and to determine if the house will be hit when it falls. By setting up a proportion of the height versus the shadow length, we can indirectly find the height of the tree. And by cross multiplying, we can now solve for x. The height of the tree is 31.625 feet. Since the tree is 34 feet away from the house, and the tree is only 31.625 feet, the tree will safely fall to the ground without hitting the house. We definitely couldn't have figured out the height of this tower by measuring directly. You never know when you'll need to calculate a distance using indirect measurements. This has been Emmett, Armand, Carol, Katie, and Dirk with Lessons That Count where math stops being confusing and starts being real. Hey, guys, want to race to the tower? Yes. yes. Sure.